Hey, good morning, guys. I'm going to talk today about something that's a little unusual that I don't believe I've ever talked about before, and that's uh, kerosene heaters. I have uh, three of them. I really like them. Mrs. P.I.B. likes them. I've had this one probably, I'm going to take a guess and say 30, 35 years, maybe longer than that, give or take. Uh, it saved me. From freezing to death a few times, uh, when when my son was first born, uh, he was born in January, and uh, as luck would have it, my central heat and air unit went out, and it was a cold spell in East Tennessee. Oh my goodness, cold, and uh, of course we didn't have no heat, and I was struggling financially so this little kerosene heater kind of kept us warm i'd fill it up before i went to work and uh when i'd come home you know i'd fill it up again and you know it it ran all the time at least till we got through this cold snap now we just had a cold snap it's finally starting to get out of here uh you know and it it, it got down to like five degrees and uh, we had rolling blackouts on top of that. So they were telling us all this stuff before the uh, the cold snap got here from Antarctica or wherever, Alaska, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it, it was downright cold. Anyway, not as cold as other places I know. So maybe we're, maybe I'm a little bit of a weenie. Yeah. We're just wimpy. We're just wimpy, Mrs. P.I.B. said. So, uh. I had the kerosene heater sitting right here, and it's been running for three days. So, uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about kerosene heaters. First of all, like I said, this thing ran nonstop for three days. Uh, and there's a tank that goes down in here, and it's there's a little plastic. I don't know if you can see it or not. There's a little plastic nub that sticks up. And it, the tank, when you put it down in there, uh, it has a, a little, I'll, sh I'll show you here in a minute. Let me get this, let me tell you about this. This comes off and I've cleaned it. Let it I cleaned it with some uh, Windex and, and a, my wife's toothbrush. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I, I always save my old toothbrushes when we go to the dentist. And get new ones because it's good for stuff like this or working on your car or your truck or whatever. But this sun's making it look dirtier than it really is. I told Mrs. P.I.B. I bet we have the cleanest kerosene heater in, uh, in probably four or five counties. When you, Oh, this part here comes off. The flame. If you've never used a kerosene heater, you turn it on. And... Uh, I always get a, a lighter or, you know, one of those uh, things you can, that you get at the dollar store or something and uh, uh, you can start it, the fire, what you do, and this is probably dumb to y'all, but this is what I do, turn it, turn it up, the wick, this is the wick, and you can see how it is here, it's kind of, this one this one actually needs to be replaced. It's I've used this for years and it's time for a new one. But anyway, I've cleaned it, took all the little uh hard places off from where you know contaminants with the toothbrush and using my finger going back and forth like this. You know, just crushing them up and then getting a toothbrush and uh you know, get, getting rid of all the contaminants, making it as clean as I can. This toothbrush, I brush, I brush. I'm not doing a very good job, Anima. I, I brush the little bristles here. This way, then I go this way. And I, I keep doing it till I get it as clean as I possibly can. There's a spot that I missed. And I need to get that here in a few minutes. But anyway. Okay, uh. You get you set this down like this, like if you're going to start it, and it's full of kerosene. 
turn it up. Get your little lighter there from the dollar store. Let me show you what I got. One of these things. I Sometimes, guys, I can't think straight. And uh, y'all know what it is. You can get them at the dollar store. Lighter. Yeah, lighter, you know. Anyway, I'll just stick it in there, light it. Of course, when the wick is full of kerosene, it will ignite. And then it takes a few minutes, all this to get red, glowing red hot in a few minutes. Then you can adjust the flame with this. And what you want to do is get a, a nice, even blue flow, blue flow through here. It'll, it'll be it'll be blue all the way around through here just a light uh you know blue flame and uh and it, you're gonna it's gonna smell like kerosene for a few minutes but after a while you won't smell it i've had people come in the house and they didn't even know i had a kerosene heater going but uh it's really been a lifesaver for me and uh and for mrs pib like i said we had Oh, we had a uh, rolling blackouts, and uh, we this thing kind of helped us a whole bunch keep things from getting cold, and uh, we we slept downstairs even. We have a two story home if you didn't know, and we slept downstairs just to be next to the heat, and uh, we kept the doors open so the heat uh, would go travel upstairs too. We kept our pops, our water lines you know the faucet and stuff dripping cabinet doors open all that kind of stuff and a lot of people don't know that believe it or not but anyway uh it's really been a lifesaver this thing can you can put batteries in it but but i never do that batteries corrode and next thing you know you got a bunch of corroded up batteries so i just use that little ign ign ignition lighter thing so, uh, I was trying to figure up how much kerosene I used for three days. I'm I'm going to go out on a limb. And I'd rather say too much is not enough. So, I'll say, I'll say four gallons for three days. So, uh, and that's 24 hours a day. So, uh, I just, before the storm came, you know, they saying we're going to have it pretty rough with rolling blackouts. So, I went and got kerosene which was almost eight dollars a gallon so if i used four that was 32 bucks that's a lot of money it is but if you don't have no heat i mean wouldn't you rather have heat so i mean you just kind of got to go with the flow and mrs pib and i were watching the news and you know there's people going around shooting uh power stations and stuff like that so you don't have no power and if that happens I mean, you're not going to be able to get no kerosene or gasoline or, or go to the store or nothing. So, uh, I mean, this is kind of a lifesaver. And like I said, I've had this thing for years. I, you know, I've, I bought it used from a friend of mine. I didn't buy it new. So I don't know really how old this thing is. It's a Toyota or Toyo set. I don't know what brand that is, but. Uh, my suggestion, if you're ever going to buy a kerosene heater, of course, if they don't have any, just get what you can. But what I do, uh, as far as uh, the tank goes, I get one that's like this. You, you can buy kerosene heaters that the tank is attached to the kerosene heater. I don't know if that makes any sense, but just trust me. The kerosene heater and the tank is all attached I like them like this because you can pull the tank out. You're not supposed to do that, but I've done it for years, and uh, this is what I do. I can hang on. I'll show you the tank. This is the tank, and it, it holds over a gallon, I'm sure. But uh, anyway, this is the little thing I was telling you about. Now, this this goes upside down in here. This part will be on the bottom. So when it hits that little plastic thing, it punches this thing in and it feeds itself with kerosene. This is the little sight thing that you can see down here 
when the tank is in, letting you know when you're starting to get low on fuel. Hang on. Okay, I'm, I'm going to clean this wick up some more just, just because I, I always try to be efficient as I can. If you keep the wick clean, like every time we get done using it, I clean the wick. And I clean it up best that I can. Uh, anyway, if you get getting back to what I was talking about, I get sidetracked easy, guys. I apologize. But I, uh, I can pull the tank out, go fill it back up in the garage or someplace outside with kerosene. And slide it back in here real slow, real slow, and I mean, you know, just real slow. And I don't, I don't have to, uh, I don't have to turn the kerosene heater off. When I get done with the kerosene heater, using it like it's warmed up today, it's finally got up to thirty-six. Yeah, first time it's been above freezing in probably five days. And uh, anyway. So, I, I, I take the kerosene heat, I take the tank out first of all. This probably don't make no sense to y'all. And the, when I'm talking about it, it don't make no sense. But I hope that you can understand what I'm saying. I take the tank out, which probably needs to be filled up anyway. Take the tank out gently. Close the lid. I take this thing while it's still running. And I set it outside and I let it continue running while it's running, working, I mean, putting out heat. You know, I keep it just running and it will kind of clean itself. It'll bring all the contaminants up to the top. Sorry for the glare, guys. Let me move so you can see. Anyway, it'll bring all the contaminants up. This is where the toothbrush and my black fingers come into play. You know, I kind of crunch it up. It's kind of like a, I don't know, kind of like a little gravels or something, I guess. Little rocks. Anyway, uh, you just want to get, make everything just as, just like this. Just like, kind of like a fur coat or something. Does that make sense? Anyway, like I said, this one's wore out. Needs a new wick put in it. But, uh, anyway, it's kept us warm. And, uh. On top of that, uh, oh, this emergency shut off. If it, if it tilts or anything, it'll shut itself off so there's no fire. But uh, my wife and I, when we, when we, when we had this thing going, we could put uh, hot water on top of here. I mean, you got to watch this thing, guys. It's, it's not, uh, you know, it's, it's something you got to keep your eye on. But you can put hot water up here, and we've had a, you know, cup of soup, and uh, you know, coffee. Uh, my wife's even cooked like tomato soup and stuff like this on here. You know, in a pot, it takes a while for it to get warm, but it will get warm. And the hot, it, we got a big old. Uh, coffee pot thing cast iron thing that my grandmother had years ago and uh i i have it now and we uh we, we can set it on you know it's a great big old thick aluminum thing and you can set water in it and you know the steam will come up and kind of moisturize the air that you're breathing in you know and it's, it's this this thing like i said it saved me a bunch of times from you know freezing to death you know, being cold and all that kept my pipes from bursting. And uh, it's really been a good friend. Like I said, I've got three of these kerosene heaters. They're not like this. They're different. Just whenever I found a good deal that was one that was clean and all that, you know, I would, uh, you know, buy it normally from friends. And a lot of people, I, I don't think too many people use kerosene heaters anymore, but I'm just telling you what to do or telling you what I think is best. If you're thinking about getting a kerosene heater, just, just in case of power outages or some somebody, some nutcase is out shooting out uh, power grids and this, that, and the other, and you got to stay warm, get one like this where you can pull the tank out and not have to turn the kerosene heater off. I mean, that's just what I do. You do everything at your own discretion. Uh, 
I mean, you can, it's got handles on each side. You can pick up the whole thing and move it, of course. And, uh, you know, it's, I really like this thing. And it's, like I said, it's saved me. But my suggestion, my, excuse me, my suggestion is get one that you can take the tank out, fill it back up and keep the kerosene heater going. Just do it very gently, very gently. And uh, when you do clean the wick, let me say this. I don't know if I did or not. When you do clean the wick and there's no more kerosene in it and you've cleaned it with toothbrush and your fingers and, you know, uh, paper towels and all this stuff, you know, and just get off. I try to keep it as clean as I possibly can. And you can see where I've had smudges with the window cleaner, but I keep everything as clean as I can. Uh, when you put the kerosene tank back in it's going to take uh i just i do everything on the safe side so uh i'll say two three hours for the kerosene out of the tank to soak through up to the top of the wick does that make sense when i put the tank in and you can hear it start going gloop, 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 where it's taking the kerosene in. The wick is soaking up the kerosene. So when it, I always give it, I give everything more than enough time. When I put Penetrol on an old car or an old truck, I'll give it a couple of days to dry, even though it's dry before then. Same way with this. I, I'll give it like three hours, maybe a little longer. I mean, I, I just want to make sure it's full of kerosene, the wick. And, uh, you know, we'd be, oh yeah, uh, it will uh, absorb all the kerosene that it needs. Then when you need it, you've got it. You know, all, all, I, all I do is open up this uh, little cage here, little fence, whatever you want to call it. Raise this up, tilt it up, get my little lighter. Of course, I can't do it with one hand holding here. Uh, I'm holding the phone in this, so get my lighter started. It'll start right up. The fire of the, the uh, oh my goodness, what's wrong with me today? My fire starter, it'll go all the way around in a circle, and it'll take a few minutes for it to, you know, to get itself where you want it, and then you can adjust, the, you can adjust the flame by moving this, and doing this, you know, kind of moving it around a little bit to, you, you want it, you want a constant orange, you know, with a blue flame. If you have any, if your flame has some white, you know, white tip of the flame, uh, you've got too much going in it. Just make it just a constant blue flame where there's no white. If you've got white going in it uh, at the top of the flame, it's take, it's, doing too much so just lower it down uh and move move this around a little make it an even flame anyway i hope this makes sense i'm trying to help y'all there's a lot of people up north i've been hearing on the news that don't have no heat and uh i know kerosene is expensive i don't have a wood heater wood's expensive everything is expensive and uh you know i just This is this is my way. This is our way, Mrs. P. I being myself's way to stay warm, even when we don't have no power. We went without power before, for several days when we had a real heavy snowstorm. Lots of poles, uh, you know, electrical poles fell down, electrical lines fell down. So we went several days, and this is how we cooked. This is how we stayed warm, and you know, you still got hot coffee, and uh, you know, soup, just. This little thing does everything, so like I said, anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. I know it's not much, but I'm just trying to tell you what we do, and if you get an opportunity to get a kerosene heater, get the one with the tank that you can take out. That's, that's my suggestion. I'm just trying to give you a few tips. All three of mine that I have are made this same way. I don't want one that the tank is connected directly where I can't, you know, you know, some of them's got, some of the kerosene heaters are big round, and, uh, you know, they produce heat all the way around. See, this one doesn't make heat in the back. 
or on the sides. It just radiates out through this way. So, I mean, I can set it. I always set it in the middle of the room kind of anyway. So, uh, this is what I like. But, it, I, you know, maybe if you have a big garage or something, you might want one of them that, you know, the whole thing produces heat all the way around. But I, me, myself, I don't want one. And uh, like I said, I like the one that you can pull the tank out. Y'all have a blessed day. I'm sorry. I hope this video made sense. I'm trying to help y'all. I was, like I said, I was listening to the news and it's things going on in this world. It's just, it's just crazy, isn't it? But you can still buy these and, uh, you know, if you, I'm not an expert on anything. So, I mean, if I can help you, I will, but, and, uh, you know, I've done this. I don't know, 30, 40 years. I mean, I've had this thing a long time and it was my buddies before he, before I bought it from him, I finally talked him out of this one. And uh, like I said, I live in East Tennessee, so it's not like I have to burn kerosene, you know, for the whole winter season. Of course, I got central heat and air, but if you don't have no power, you know, it's not going to work. This will. God bless y'all. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, let me know. Uh, subscribe to Primer is Best. I'd appreciate it. And uh, I'm on Facebook, Primer is Best, and Instagram, Primer is Best. I, uh, I got a second YouTube channel called Man on a Budget, and I'm on Instagram, Man on a Budget One. Appreciate if you check my old videos out and stuff that I have of cars and trucks and and some of the things Mrs. P.I.B. and I fool around with a lot. Maybe you'll enjoy it and. Uh, God bless each and every one of y'all. I'll catch y'all in the next video, and uh, I'll see y'all later.